Uh, welcome to a new video and a new camera comparison between the Huawei Mate 50 Pro against the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. So let's get started! So let's take a look at both of them that I have here in some very fancy cases. So we have uh, two times 50 megapixels. So the 50 megapixel main one inch type sensor on the 12S Ultra and a one over 1.5 inch type sensor uh, IMAX 766 on the Mate 50 Pro. Then we have 2 times 48 megapixels, which is the ultra wide angle and telezoom on uh, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. And we have a 64 megapixel telelens on 3.5 times telelens on the Mate 50 Pro, as well as 13 megapixels ultra wide angle. And then, of course, we have something on the front. Here we have a 13 megapixel ultra wide um, yeah, front facing camera housed in a 3D notch. Uh, free uh, sensor on the Mate 50 Pro and a 32 megapixel uh, front cam on the 12S Ultra. And I think we start off with the front facing camera video. This is the front facing video of the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. 1080p 30 frames per second is the maximum here on the front facing video camera. So, yeah, uh, not very the the best uh, so this is what you can expect in terms of stabilization colors and hdr and so on i think it's okay uh, but still only 1080p and this is now the mate 50 pro and it's front facing video 4k 30 it can even record 4k 60 if i want to sadly it's, it doesn't have autofocus but at least it has 4k i think hdr is also working fine and i have the possibility to switch to ultra wide angle or uh, one-time zoom as you can see here which is pretty nice so it has a pretty uh, good default angle I would say for recording videos and vlogs what do you think about this one here and now I'm recording with the main one inch sensor of the Xiaomi 12s Ultra and this is the quality that you can expect this is a default video profile that I'm recording with uh, because yeah on the Xiaomi 12s Ultra you have the vibrant and you have the more authentic kind of look but these are like a vibrant and like authentic are for photography not so much for videography if you want to switch in one of those modes in video then it will automatically downgrade the video quality from 4k to 1080p so this is something that I don't want to test out right now here and if you're interested in this just watch one of my previous videos uh, uh, where I show you this right now. Otherwise, yeah, this is the main camera. Mm. During recording 4K 30, I also have the possibility to switch to the ultra wide angle. So let me just go to the ultra wide angle. So this is now the ultra wide angle. That's the camera in the middle. And it also has autofocus, which can be used for yeah close-up shots and so on. And yeah, this is, I think, the perfect vlogging kind of uh, shot that you have here. And if I want to, I also have the ability to zoom in on, say, on things. So I have the possibility to zoom in on yeah, stuff that, are, that is appearing on the other side of the Rhine, for example. Let me walk a little bit faster here so you get a grip of uh, focusing and stabilization and so on, how it's working. And then I show you a zoom shot as well. So. There we go. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. This is now one time. And two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. I switch lenses. As you can see, I can go up to 15 times. And this is 4K 30, as you can see here. And I think it looks pretty okay and is very stable. And now I'm recording with the Huawei Mate 50 Pro and its default video app. This uses, I think, roughly f2 as the aperture. As you know that this one has the variable aperture. It makes a lot of sense to test this out as well. So I will do another video shot, same situation, where I can compare it a bit more with the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. So this is the Pro Mode now, f1.4 as the highest or biggest opening of the aperture that I have here on this device. How's the background blur? Is it comparable to the Xiaomi 12s Ultra? I think there's still a difference in terms of how something looks like a one inch type sensor and its natural background blur and this uh, a little bit smaller kind of sensor 
with a uh, larger aperture that also gives a nice background blur. But what do you think? Write it down in the comment section. What do you think about uh, this in comparison to the Xiaomi 12s Ultra? Which one has the better background blur? And we also want to check out the ultra wide angle. So I can during recording 4K30, of course, switch to the ultra wide angle. So this is now the ultra wide angle here. 13 megapixels is doing also a very fine job, I would say, also in HDR and everything else. The colors and so on should be fine as well. Also stabilization, if I walk a little bit faster here right now, should be working fine, especially on this ultra wide angle. And uh, looks a bit over sharp and I think just like the Xiaomi Traverse Ultra look. And now we want to check out the zoom. So let's go here same situation and let me zoom in so this is now one time switch lenses three times four times switch lenses and i can go also up to 15 times and this is roughly the same thing that you saw with the Traverse ultra and stabilization is good here and i don't see much of a difference here as well uh, i could even like go in here i can see a little bit more of details there but yeah yeah in general i think pretty pretty close to the 12s ultra what do you think so the photos on the left always the 12s ultra on the right always the mate 50 pro we know we have different color profiles on the 12s ultra most of the photos were shot with the vibrant like a vibrant mode because this is the one that i got recommended and after testing i think it's the best on the 12s ultra that works for smartphone photography on the mate 50 pro i did use most of the time the original mode but these are the settings that you can see here the original mode has, has not so much blue in the sky as the 12s ultra for example if i go and switch to the vibrant mode we get lots and lots of more blue in the sky on the mate 50 pro we have a bit of more sharpening going on for sure we have a bit more punch definitely and then there's a bright mode which is basically brightened up version of the vibrant mode that you can see here otherwise on the Traverse ultra we have the original mode which looks like this which looks still different than the mate 50 pro's original mode or like authentic versus mate 50 pro's original x -Mitch uh, original mode here so when it comes to sharpness you can see that we have the Traverse ultra wonderfully focusing here the mate 50 pro i think is struggling a bit it has everything nice and sharp in the foreground but the background is i think blurry for some reason so i in defense of the in defense of the mate 50 pro i just simply guess it was like out of focus when we take a look at the ultra wide angle now we can see that uh, let's compare the vibrant versus vibrant mode we can see that the mate 50 pros vibrant mode is much more aggressive much more vibrant than the Traverse ultras ones so i like the uh, mate 50 pros uh, authentic uh, original mode a little bit better which doesn't have so much shadows here it's not so vibrant but has much better colors i would say and it's coming very close to the um, Traverse Ultra. What you can clearly see here is that either the Traverse Ultra is out of focus or it's just simply not having so much sharpness all around the board where the Mate 50 Pro is much, much more sharper and it doesn't really matter if I'm in vibrant mode, oops, if I'm in vibrant mode or if I'm not in vibrant mode, we have much more sharpness on the Mate 50 Pro than on the Traverse Ultra. And the Traverse Ultra in authentic mode we can see like authentic mode everything is a little bit less sharp even here on the Travis ultra so i think that the ultra wide angle in general is not so sharp on the Travis ultra we take a look at close-up shots and bokeh with the main lens of course the Travis ultra with its one inch size has its advantages you can see how nice the background blur looks here if you compare it to the mate 50 pro yes the mate 50 pro has a bit more of the flower and sharpness because first of all f2 and we have a smaller sensor on the mate 50 pro but what i can do is i can go to manual mode uh, pro mode and uh, raise the aperture to f 1.4 and then i get even more creamy background blur, blur as you can see here on the mate 50 pro and uh, the problem is just this is then also making the flower in general a bit more blurry and only really this front part here are uh, not blurry which is like uh, a bit better on the Traverse Ultra so I think yes you can get a bit more background blur with the Mate 50 Pro but then less sharpness as well so I like I think the good middle ground that you can reach with the Mate 50 Pro as well if you want to but the Traverse Ultra uh, you have it out of the box though I don't like the colors here which are way too blue in the background uh, when it comes to close-up shots macro mode both doing a fine job we see a bit of more um, 
contrast applied on the 12 s ultra for some reason but in terms of sharpness and so on they're both doing a nice job one thing for sure that is also very interesting uh, is that the mate 50 pro has the ability even in macro mode to zoom in so this is three and a half times zoom now it's not utilizing the three and a half times zoom just utilizing i think the ultra wide angle and zooming in and it looks good if i'm not zooming to 100 percent but if i go to 100 percent you can see yeah uh, it's a bit mushy on the 12s ultra however it's not really better and even if i go to the normal macro mode not without any zooming here you can see i can get a bit clearer and a bit uh, closer with the mate 50 pro overall the macro shot capabilities of the mate 50 pro are a bit superior than to the 12s ultra for sure ultra wide angle ultra wide angle and 12s ultra against the sun is like a mess uh, hdr is heavily applied but we have like nothing sharp and in focus here where the mate 50 pro has um, maybe struggled a bit with hdr because we have overblown highlights but doesn't have this other issue where it's having problems with the focus when it comes to zoom in shots of course the mate 50 pro it's a native lens uh, three and a half times zoom has sharper shot than the 12s ultra though the 12s ultra is doing a pretty good job this is now a crop in only on the main lens and you can see very very close though i think it's a bit over sharpened on the 12s ultra which looks a bit artificial and i think the mate 50 pro is doing a better job at its native zoom range when it comes to five times zoom then the 12s ultra has its native zoom range the mate 50 pro not so mate 50 pro is doing a little bit of computational zoom hybrid zoom where the 12s ultra is nice and sharp and has more details and is definitely better in terms of hybrid zoom also notice that there's a color difference again a bit of warmer colors on the mate 50 pro a bit cooler on the Travers ultra when you go to 10 times zoom we can clearly see it even more pron pronounced here on the mate 50 pro and also yeah it is not the sharpest uh, the Travers ultra has lots of noise already creeping in but it appears to be also that this noise is uh, yeah clearly showing a little bit more details here that we are missing on the mate 50 pro so in terms of zoom range I think both doing a fine job but the Travers Ultra with a little bit more details here and there. This is 30 times zoom and again the same very noisy very pixeling on the Mate 50 Pro very smooth but then also missing a little bit of lack of details here and yeah this is the zoom shot. Selfie shots I was a bit unhappy with the Travers Ultra because it was like looking on the screen even worse than here and uh, yeah, everything is a little bit overblown looks so artificial I'm not sure what's going on in the background here uh, fringing and ah uh, just bad on the mate 50 pro uh, we have first of all a little bit more contrast we don't have this haze we have a bit more sharpness on my face as well and we don't have like this super super awkward issue that we have with the frame of the Travers ultra where everything looks like a bit in a haze so the mate 50 pro is doing a better job in terms of selfies ultra wide angle again um, this is like authentic showing nice the sky not so blue as the mate 50 pro is doing even if I, this is not this is also the original mode of xmich uh, mate 50 pro and if i go to the uh, the punchy version the vibrant version it's even more vibrant but what we can clearly see is sharpness overall again is um, not only sharper uh, it's not only sharpness applied on the Mate 50 Pro overall, the ultra wide angle is simply better on the Mate 50 Pro. <clears throat> then when we check out the background blur again here, we can clearly see yeah, the difference again, 12s Ultra and Mate 50 Pro. Colors wise, I think it's a bit more contrasty on the 12s Ultra as a matter of taste here. You can go also to the uh, f1.4 stop here in aperture mode and then we get like very something very very close to the 12 s ultra so i would say i'm a bit surprised that you can create a similar kind of feeling with the mate 50 pro that you can create with the 12 s ultra's one inch type sensor just by um, yeah playing around with the aperture on the mate 50 pro otherwise color wise it's a matter of taste and i like the mate 50 pros a little bit better but some people like to have a bit more contrasty photo in the night time we have brighter exposure on the mate 50 pro also more detailed and this is now not even night mode on the mate 50 pro it's simply automatic the Travers ultra is using night mode when we go to the night mode here you can see it gets a bit more punch on the mate 50 pro and it gets even a little bit sharper 
And then of course, uh, it can also sometimes fail. In this case, the Travis Ultra with larger one inch size sensor has a bit more accurate colors and a bit more too yellowish colors, too much noise and noise reduction going on in color noise on the Mate 50 Pro. Smaller sensor, RYYB, adding a bit more yellow, but uh, also an issue where it's struggling sometimes. Uh, selfies, forget about them in the night, even though the night mode has uh, them there. And another shot here, we can see, clearly see that the superior RYOB sensor is producing much better white balance. And also I think in terms of sharpness, both are doing very well here. But I think also because of the brighter exposure uh, in general on the Mate 50 Pro, that the Mate 50 Pro is, I think, still low light king, even though the Travis Ultra technically uh, should have won this. And then when it comes to the ultra wide angle, no difference. The Mate 50 Pro's ultra wide angle is also better in the dark. Much brighter exposure, much more details, uh, a little bit more noise for sure, but the Travis Ultra is just simply too dark and too less details that you can clearly see yes and ultra wide angle uh, is one thing but the zoom lens is another thing this destroys the mate 50 pro destroys in night mode three and a half times zoom destroys the five times native zoom on the 12s ultra in night mode more details more brighter better exposure more details uh, even though it's not 100 the best but it's just simply better on the mate 50 pro and now recording with the aperture set to f1.4 manually in aperture mode to see how this will look like on the Mate 50 Pro. And in the dark, this is how it's looking like. And uh, getting a bit to the light, as you can see here, much better probably. And uh, yeah, to see how good this is when I'm doing uh, dark videos and if I'm still uh, can be seen here or not. Now same deal with the one inch type sensor on the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, very large sensor so probably should get me better eventually but we have an RYYB sensor on the Mate 50 Pro so don't forget about this. So going towards the light now, light in the background, how is my face looking like is the Xiaomi 12s Ultra winning against the Mate 50 Pro as the sensor size would suggest or is the RYYB sensor performing its magic together with the larger aperture opening that we have? Mm, pretty interesting I would say. What do you think? So I showed you now lots and lots of photos and uh, videos about the Mate 50 Pro and the 12s Ultra. I'm currently recording with the Mate 50 Pro and the Aperture Mode because the Aperture Mode also has the option to record video which is also pretty handy and this is one way you also can get this large aperture, large opening f1.4 for video if you want to and of course for photos as well. And yeah, this is the 12s Ultra. What do you think about those? Uh, what's the conclusion? I think the one inch sensor here on the 12s Ultra is still beating the IMAX 766, but it's very impressive how Huawei, after all those sanctions and bans are still keeping up in terms of camera technologies and have something very interesting, like this variable aperture that is tons of fun to play around with and it's not only a gimmick like I thought in the beginning you can really have some creative um, yeah creative things you can do with it so there are very creative things that you can do with this aperture changing the aperture during recording in pro mode for example might be very very useful and interesting for some people and uh, yeah it is very very interesting I like to see this on more and more cameras to have this feature also on one inch type sensors especially because there it might be very very useful and what do you think about this one in uh, comparison Mate 50 Pro against the 12s Ultra I still lean towards the 12s Ultra for most parts um, also yeah maybe not so much colors but uh, yeah what do you think write it down in the comment section who is your clear winner here in this comparison uh, that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.